In this video, I'm going to show you how to use EF Core directly in your application query handlers while still honoring the clean architecture principle of not introducing a dependency on EF Core in your application layer. So let's dive in. So what is the problem that I'm trying to solve? I have a query handler here that is fetching a user by the identifier and it's using an iApplication DB context abstraction to execute an EF Core link query and return back a response. This abstraction references EF Core directly and defines two DB set properties so that we can query the users and the followers tables in the database. This also means that I have a dependency on EF Core in my application layer. And this breaks the clean architecture principles, which state that you should not have external dependencies in your application layer. And the database is one of those dependencies, which is why we are using the repository pattern and the unit of work inside of our command handlers. Another reason for this is the increased stability that the repository pattern gives us but I don't want to make this digression let's go back to the query handler my general opinion is that you can be pragmatic with your design and simply accept a dependency on EF core and use it directly in your query handlers but what if you don't want to do this how could you solve this so that you can still use the same implementation but without having a dependency on EF core in your application layer well the solution for this doesn't have to be complicated and you shouldn't end up creating a lot of abstractions to achieve this you're only going to be adding in direction in your code base so what i'm going to suggest is to move the query handler classes into the infrastructure layer for example i could create a queries folder inside and let's define a subfolder that is going to contain the users queries so now i can go ahead and take my get user by id query handler and move it into the infrastructure layer so let's go ahead and do this i'm going to adjust the namespace to match the new location of this class, which is infrastructure queries users. And let's do the same for the other query that I have in the application layer, which is the get user by email query handler. So let's go ahead and move this into infrastructure. And I'm also going to adjust the namespace of this class. This query wasn't using EF core to begin with. It was using a database connection factory and executing the query using Dapper, which means we were writing raw SQL, which is also against clean architecture rules, unless you are being pragmatic. However, with the query handlers now living inside of the infrastructure layer, there's no reason to continue having a dependency on EF Core and Dapper in the application layer. So I'm going to grab the two abstractions, the application database context and the database connection factory, and I'm also going to move them into the infrastructure layer. Let me also adjust the namespaces for these two classes. And you can see that my query handlers are still working as expected. And at this point, there's probably no reason why you should continue having these two abstractions at all. So the iApplicationDB context is just implemented by the actual database context, which you now have access to in the infrastructure layer. So I can go ahead and get rid of this abstraction completely, delete the iApplicationDB context interface, and I need to fix the query that is now broken. So what I can do is just use the database context directly because I'm now in the infrastructure layer and I have access to it. I can do the same for the database connection factory. So so I can get rid of this interface and remove the abstraction itself. And I need to update the get user by email query handler to use the database connection factory directly. Having abstractions for the sake of having interfaces for dependency injection doesn't add a lot of value in your code and you will be just fine with using the classes directly. And now that I remove the interfaces, I also need to fix my dependency injection setup. So I'm registering the DB connection factory and the application database context directly with dependency injection. However, this kind of refactoring doesn't come without its cost and we ended up introducing two breaking changes. So if I go to the application layer, add application method, which is responsible for configuring my services with dependency injection, there is this call here to add mediator, which is going to automatically register my query handlers with dependency injection. This will no longer pick up my query handlers that are now living in the infrastructure layer. So what I can do is just copy this service registration and add it to my add infrastructure method. Let's say we add this code here. I won't be needing the behaviors because they're already registered in the application layer. And I'm just going to add this call here to add mediator and then call the register services from assembly method 
and pass it the infrastructure assembly. This will scan the infrastructure assembly and pick up the query handlers and configure them with Mediator. And something like this is safe to do because it won't duplicate the existing registrations in the infrastructure layer and the core services of Mediator are always registered just once using the try pattern for registering services. So if you didn't know, there are try add methods for example, try add scoped, try add singleton, or try add transient, which are only going to register your services if they aren't already there in the service collection. The second problem that I caused is a compile error inside of my domain event handler. Now this class, I still want to keep inside of my application layer. So how I can fix this is by getting rid of the database connection factory. And what I'm going to do is just inject the ice sender from mediator. So let's inject the ice sender and initialize it from the constructor. And how I'm going to use this is to create a new query instance and send it using the sender. So let's go to the handle method. And what I need here is the user DTO for this user identifier so that I can obtain the user's name. So let's create a query instance. For example, the get by ID query. I can pass it the user ID from my domain event object. Then I can try to fetch the user by saying await sender send and we can pass it the query instance and also the cancellation token. And what we get back is a result of a user response. So I'm going to rename this to represent this fact. This is actually a user result. And the value is the user response, which contains the name that I'm looking for. But what should we do if this is actually a failure result, which means the user was not found? In this case, we encountered an exceptional situation where I simply can't continue my handle method. So the most appropriate thing to do would be to throw an exception. And what you could do is create a custom exception for this. So let's create a new user not found exception. It's going to implement the base exception class. And for example, in the constructor, I can accept the user identifier. I can then use this to generate a message that I can pass to the base constructor. And the message could be the user with the identifier. And then I can introduce the user ID was not found. And now I can throw my custom user not found exception and pass it the user identifier. Let's also move this exception into its own file. And I'm going to nest it under the users folder because that's where the user not found exception belongs. This solves the problems that we ran into with moving our query handlers into the infrastructure layer. But what would it look like to define a new query in the application layer? Let's, for example, say I want to create a new query under the followers feature folder, and I'm going to call it the get follower stats query. And let's define the query class inside. We'll give it the same name. So get follower stats query. I'm going to make this into a public and sealed record. It's going to have one argument, which will be the user ID whose follower stats we are querying. And it's going to implement the iQuery interface. I need to define a query response. So let's create a record that's going to represent this. So this will be the follower stats response. I'm going to use this for my query. And inside of this record, I'm going to define the user ID. And then I'm going to add two integer fields, the follower count and the following count which will represent the number of users that are following you and the number of users that you are following. And let's also move this into its own file. And practically, this is all I need to define a new query in my system. And now I'm already ready to use it inside of an endpoint. So for example, if I go to the web API and the user endpoints, I can create a new query, for example, similar to this one, because I can reuse part of the implementation. And let's say that the route is follower stats we already have the user identifier but we're just going to create the get follower stats query this query returns a different response so let's go ahead and use an explicit type to make that obvious and my api endpoint is done it only cares about what query i'm sending and what is the response returned by this query and this is enough information to implement my minimal api endpoint and then the actual query handler becomes just an implementation detail inside of your infrastructure layer which also gives you a lot of flexibility with how you want to implement it. So let's go ahead and add an implementation for our query. 
I'm going to nest it under the followers folder and let's add a new class that we're going to call the get followers query handler. This is going to be an internal and sealed class implementing the iQuery handler interface and is going to return a follower stats response. So I'm going to implement this interface and I'm just going to use my database context directly. So let me inject it from the constructor and now I can implement my handle method. So I need to do a few things here. First of all, I want to verify if this user even exists. Otherwise, we're going to return a 404 not found response. So let's do something like this. If not, await, and then I'll say DB context, users, any async, and I'm looking for a user with this particular ID. So I'm going to pass it the request user ID. If this user doesn't exist, then we're going to return a user not found error. I can say return result failure of the follower stats response and the error I'm looking for is the not found user error. I also have to pass it the user ID so that it can create the proper error instance. And then the next thing after I verified that this user actually exists is to count the number of followers and the number of people they are following. This could be done with a count query. So I can say that the follower count is calculated using the database context. And then I can query my followers table and I can say count async. And what I want to count is the number of rows where the followed user ID matches the user ID that we get in the query. The reverse is also true when I'm trying to calculate the number of users the current user is following. So I'm going to call this the following count and we're going to get this value by querying for the user ID. So if our current user is the one following someone, then we're going to count those rows. And now I can just return a new follower stats response, assign it the user ID and the follower count and the following count values. With a relational database, this kind of query is going to be expensive because it might end up counting a large number of rows. So you might consider caching it for a given period of time or even pre-computing this value when the user starts following someone or someone starts following the current user. Something like that could be implemented by publishing the respective events and then in the event handlers performing the required calculations. You should watch the video about materialized views next where I show you how to use domain event to perform expensive calculations asynchronously in the background. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons and until next time, stay awesome.